Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a really long time since I've made a video, but uh, I'll make a vlog video or something to catch you up to date with what's, what's all gone on. Suffice it to say, I have a new camera and a new computer and new editing software and hopefully I'll be able to get back to making some videos with some pretty decent regularity. But for today I have a special treat for everybody and in the time since I've made my last video I've developed a new hobby and that hobby I'll blame on my youngest daughter Jenny. Um, she was interested in Nerf blasters and wanted a Nerf blaster and, and brought one home that was not in the best of shape and needed some repair work and and that's a story for another day but anyway suffice it to say that I got the blaster repaired and working but in the meantime I kinda of developed an interest in the Nerf blasters myself and in since that time the whole family's gotten their own Nerf blasters I have more Nerf blasters than any single person probably should have and uh, I've even put together a Nerf night at our local church and we've just been having a lot of fun with it and one of the blasters that I really enjoy is this one it's the rival Kronos um, sidearm blaster of course has a five round internal magazine that's loaded by inserting the high impact rounds the uh, rival nerf balls into the internal magazine now needless to say inserting five individual rounds into the internal magazine of this thing is time consuming and tedious so I was trying to determine what would be a better way to quickly load five rounds into that thing and that's what today's video is about uh, I've come up with a way and my own little design to make this device which is a speed loader for the rival Kronos it will hold uh, in this configuration will hold five uh, rival high impact rounds and you can just quickly insert that right there you've loaded five rounds um, so gets you right back in the action pretty quickly uh, another interesting feature of this one because of the way that I've put it together uh, some of the ones that are available 3D printed uh, commercially, you can only use them one way. Uh, this one, because of the way I've designed it and because of the way it goes together, you should be able to use it loading rounds into either end. So I think that's a little more versatile, uh, certainly a lot less expensive than the ones that are commercially available. And I'm going to show you how to build it today. Uh, there's a few things that you'll need. Those things are, as far as materials go, you'll need a five and a half inch long piece of three quarter inch thin walled PVC and the high impact rounds fit in there just perfectly. They fit in snug, they don't fall out and it's a beautiful thing. You'll also need a one inch piece of half inch schedule 40 PVC and that's going to go inside and that's going to be the follower for us. The only other materials you're going to need is you're going to need a half inch long 832 machine screw. I'm using the round head, um, whatever your preference is, it really doesn't matter. And a nylon insert 832 lock nut and that will go on there. The nylon insert will grab on tightly so it won't loosen up. You don't have to tighten it down tightly. It won't over tighten on you. It won't loosen up on you and it should be a beautiful thing. As far as the tools go uh, for this project, you'll need some kind of a saw. I'm using a little pool saw as is one of my favorite tools and you'll need that to cut the PVC uh, into the right length. You'll need some kind of a measuring device. 
I'm using a combination square. I like the combination square because that lets you, you can use it in a number of ways. You can, you can set the stop for different measurements. You can also lay this up against a round thing to mark the center line. And uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. You will also need a 3 8 inch combination wrench or 3 8 inch wrench or a pair of pliers, whatever your preference is on that, and some kind of little screwdriver to hold the screw while you tighten it. The only other thing you'll need and the only specialty tool that you really need uh, to do this is a Dremel tool. If you make things at all, you probably already have a Dremel tool, and I'm using the fiberglass reinforced uh, cutoff wheel. I like that so much better than the little fiber cutoff wheels. But we'll use that to cut the slot in, uh, in the larger piece of PVC. And with that, let's get going. I'm going to reset the camera, and we'll give it a shot. Okay, so we're ready to cut our material. And I'm going to start with the half inch uh, PVC tubing, plant that in my vise. One of the things I like about the combination square is that you can set that to a particular depth of cut. Like I'm going to mark this at one inch. Uh, come here with my pull saw and that's where my cut will be. quarter inch. We'll clamp that in the vise. I want this piece to be five and a half inches so I will set that at five and a half inches. Uh, come through here and that cut's going to be right about there. called a pull saw because it cuts on the pulling motion. Um, makes it very easy to control and for small cuts like this um, it's really easy to make a nice straight cut. Now that we have our material cut out we need to measure the places where we will drill and for this piece of half inch PVC it is one inch and I'm gonna put the hole right in the middle of it so I'm gonna mark that at half inch. With this longer piece I want my holes to be three-eighths of an inch from each end. So I'm going to uh, when I talked before about the combination square I had mentioned how it's easy to put a center line on a, uh, a round tube and you do that just by laying that right into that little notch area there between the square and the straight edge and then it's really easy to come back through here and mark your center line and I want my holes like I said to be three-eighths of an inch from each end so I will put a mark three-eighths inch from that end flip it over, put another mark three-eighths of an inch from that end and there we go. Uh, you square up these ends on the belt sander and I'll put a little footage of me doing that in there um, just to make them pretty and drill the holes and then I'll be right back.
Now that our holes are drilled, our ends are squared off, this, this follower piece, we're done with that until we assemble it. Uh, this larger piece, this three quarter inch piece, what we're going to do on this is we're going to now mark the place where we're going to cut our groove. And we'll do that by making two more lines on either side of these holes, drawing from the outside edge of each hole. to mark the area that we're going to remove with the Dremel tool. There's one side. And there's the other side and we'll just remove the area between those holes. Now we've got our slot removed. So now we have all of our parts uh, completed. We've got the hole in the half inch PVC. We've got the slot cut in our three quarter inch PVC. We have our half inch 832 machine screw and our 832 nylon insert lock nut. The hard part of this whole project is, especially if you're kind of an old guy with fat fingers like I am, is getting this screw seated in this hole which we do just like so but you don't want it to go too far in because now you need to slide that in here and you want it to come through that slot here's where the diameter of that hole we were talking about before really comes in important because if your screw is too tight it won't simply drop into place like that did uh, with our screwdriver on the inside in the slot, I'm sure I cannot get that into focus. Uh, we kind of hold that at an odd angle like that, keeping pressure on it. We get our screw started. And once we get our screw started, And we take our wrench and we tighten that down. Now I'm going to tighten this to just at a point where the screw or the machine screw just barely starts to come through the nut. Obviously you don't want to tighten it down too much. You don't want to make it so tight that the insert inside the tube doesn't move. You don't want to make it so loose that it's sloppy and rattles all over the place. And you don't want the screw to come through so far that it's uncomfortable to use. But with the screw properly in place, the insert is loose. Because we made this insert at one inch long and put the hole in the middle, you can see it comes out just a little proud of the end of the tube. And if you did everything right, it should do that on both sides. Maybe this side's uh, not quite perfect on that, but it's going to be okay. Um, with that in place, we can take our high impact rounds. One, two, three, four five of them we load in there and as you can see it holds them in there nice and tightly take our chronos open the chamber and we have just loaded five rounds the other beautiful thing about this design as I was telling you that you can use it from both directions, there's one more neat thing about it if you decide that, uh, oh my, I didn't really want to load my blaster, 
you can blast them right back into your ski loader. No chasing balls all over the house. And that loads them. This is the other side of the speed loader. And you can see it works equally well from that side of the speed loader. All five rounds loaded and ready to get you right back into action. Um, functions properly, functions normally, and it's a beautiful thing. So there you have it. Uh, together, just a few minutes, just a few materials, we've made speed loader for the rival Kronos. Um, it was a fun project. These things are available commercially. There's a guy named Foam Technician uh, sells his stuff on Etsy. If you don't know about Foam Technician, go over to Etsy, search for his site. Uh, he's got some really cool stuff. He sells these 3D printed uh, in a variety of colors for about $10. I can tell you that what I spent on enough materials to make more than a dozen of these things was less than $5. I spent about $1.90 for a 10-foot section of 3 quarter inch thin wall PVC. Uh, the half inch PVC I had laying about, but it's about $1.40 to buy a 10-foot section of the half inch PVC. And it's about $0.89 cents or so for, uh, I think, 20 of the... Um, uh, 832 machine screws. So really, uh, for the price of half of one of the commercially available speed loaders, you can make a dozen of these. Uh, I'm envisioning them on a bandolier in my rival loadout. Uh, they're PVC, so they'll take enamel paint very well. Uh, you can paint these to match your personal loadout, whatever color you like. I kind of like the white because it kind of goes along with the rival theme. Uh, so if, if you're inspired by this and you make some of these yourself, and I hope that you do, uh, post a picture in the comment section down below. It would be great to see what people have done uh, taking my idea and running with it. Um, also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, click the red subscribe button down below the video here and subscribe. Click the little bell icon and you'll get notifications. That would be fantastic. If you like what I'm doing here, it would be fantastic if you could give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments, if you have any questions, if you have maybe some, some ideas for improvements to the design for this item or another item that you'd like to see, either something Nerf related or tool related or woodworking, whatever that might be, if you have any kind of question at all, leave it down in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you personally. Uh, I'll try to incorporate that into a future video. Like I said, I'm Glad to be back in the shop. Glad to be back making YouTube videos again. I hope to be making them again with regularity. And look forward to that vlog coming up uh, just to give you a little fill in on the world of an average Joe and all of the things that have gone on since my last video. But for today, that's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed our project. I hope it works for you. I hope you're inspired. And until next time, keep the faith. Walk the walk and go with God.